I played with Juan Soto, and, and then I watched Gunnar Henderson in the bigs now, and those two guys, I'm like, yeah, you're different. I still remember I, I've told this story before. But people said that Juan hadn't even come to America yet and was going to do instructs. Because you understand instructs. Yeah, yeah, been three he, times. Yeah, so he came times. down to instructs in the Dominican, yeah. and he's 17. And one of the coaches comes over. He goes, yeah, that's our best hitter in the organization. Meanwhile, Bryce Harper is there. Yeah. You have Ryan Zimmerman. Like, already guys are in the big know, leagues. I was, like, yeah. And they're going, no, 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 he's, he's better. He's going to be better. And I'm like, everyone. I had like, a similar shit. experience with Rafael Devers. <laughs> really? He came over at 17 and instructs 2013. And they said, this kid right here. We play, both played third base. <laughs> you know? And they're like, this kid right here, this is about to be one of the best players we've ever gotten. And I, and we had like, we had signed, I mean, we had multiple guys. Like Travis Shaw was in the organization. Mm -hmm. Ga Gar uh, Gavin Cicchini was a third rounder for us. Uh, that was a third baseman. Um, you know, we had just signed, um, actually we signed Jan Mankato the next year. <clears throat> but, um, mm -hmm. but no, I mean, obviously Rafael Devers is one of the best hitters and, or, you know, one of the best guys, obviously for the Red Sox, but. The only one still going that I know, but he at 17, he had this weird, you know, he still has similar batting stance, but it was even more like he's kind of brought it back. Yeah. Like he's kind of toned it down a little bit as he's gotten older, but he was fresh over at 17. That bat used to face the pitcher. Like the, the top of the bat was like facing the pitcher and he would just like literally twist and just flick and the ball would shoot out like a cannon. And you're like, wow, how the hell are you doing that? Hey, and at that time, I was 21, and I'm like, so I'm like four years older than this kid. He absolutely smashed the baseball, yeah. and he had a rocket across the diamond. I'm like, well, but the, the the first guy that I ever got around where I was like, this guy's different is Mookie Betts, by far. Yeah, I was gonna say Mookie, Mookie became, by far. So immediately when you started playing with him. We became best friends like right away. But then, did you yeah. know then? Not until, not right away, because I remember I signed to the GCL in like right at the beginning of August. Yeah. And then he signed at the signing date, which back then it was August fifteenth. Yeah. And he only had like, I think he only played one or two games. I think he only had like four abs, and I don't think he did anything. Um. But then the next year. He broke. We were all the way through instructs to, or extended together, and he played. You know, we both played pretty well. Then he broke with Lowell, and I stayed in the GCL. And it wasn't until the following year we both broke with Greenville, and we were both. I'll never forget this. We were in, in it was early May, and we were in Charleston, West Virginia, actually after sure. the trip in after. Rome. <laughs> it was this, this same experience. This was the last game of the series in. The one thing I was always so surprised with Mookie was he was so negative to himself all the time, but not in like a, like not, he, he wasn't, he was almost like he was like a defeated, like, man, you suck. Like that's how he talked to himself. And he could, at this point, he never hit a home run in his career. He didn't have any home runs. So this was, you know, two years into his career, never had a home run. And we were both hitting about, I was hitting like 150. He was hitting like 130. The difference was. He was hitting 130, lining out to the center fielder. I was hitting 150, striking out, hitting a blue, broken bat single, you know. And we were in Charleston, West Virginia, and they had a kid who was a converted hitter that was pitching. And he threw, like, mid upper 90s to low 100s. And Mook was like, he had just lined out to the wall. He was like, I'm never going to hit a home run, man. I suck. Like, blah. And I was just like, I was sitting there with Matt Gedman, who his dad was Rich Gedman, who played Hall of Famer for the Red Sox. Um, and Matt and I both kind of looked at him and we were like, shut up, dude. You're about to go up there and hit a home run. And literally since that day, he goes up there. It's an opposite field line drive over the left center or right center wall. He has not looked back since that day. It was like May 4th or 3rd, 4th or 5th. You can pinpoint uh, the, mo the Mookie turnaround. And he has never slumped. I mean, I guess he slumped in the big leagues, but. And we'll give him that. That's fine. He's. Literally in the minor leagues, I don't think he hit lower than 400 in a month after that. Because he was out of the big leagues. Oh, no, he was out of the minor leagues by the end of the next year. He went. He was in Greenville hitting 130 to got promoted at the All-Star break. Proceeds to hit like 700 in Salem. And then goes to AA. In his first game in AA, goes 4 for 4 with two, with two dingers. And hit like 350 in AA and then in the big leagues. and Or in the AAA and then 
played like 20 games in AAA at a position in the outfield, and now he's in the big leagues. And Whammy. Now he's, you know, Mr. $400 million man. Yeah, it's, that's he's, nice. He's Mookie Betts. He turned it on. Yeah. So, But he was the first guy that I was like, really like, man, this kid is far better than I will ever be. 